welcome back to the channel. I'm Mitch, this is Unseen Universe and we are in a new location, a specially designed, um, what shall I call it? <laughs> I want to call it a studio, <laughs> but it's not. Uh, basically, it's just a space I've tried to carve out for myself because I am I've decided I'm going to try and do these little videos inside the bug room because this is actually where I spend all my time generally um, during the day and also some evenings as well when I'm finishing off little bits of work. This is actually the bug room, uh, the heart of Unseen Universe. Um, obviously I have the shed outside which um, if you're if you've if you're regular to the channel and you've been here before, you know that the live streams usually take place um, outside in the shed. And um, the reason I do that is usually because um, when I'm doing my live streams, I'm usually quite animated or I'm a little bit louder. <laughs> so, um, so it just allows me to be myself a little bit more uh, because then I don't have to worry about making too much noise. But the main reason why I've decided I want to start doing videos in here is is mainly because um, there's more chance of me doing more videos basically if I do it in here um, so that's why I wanted to have this little bit of a space to be honest this space has been here for quite some time um, and um, with the intention of um, of doing videos more macro photography etc and um, that's the reason why I actually rearranged this room so I could create this central area here and, uh, but it's taken me till now really to uh, to actually utilize the space in the keeping with the um, with the previous video that you, you you may or may not have seen but in the last video I um, I made this whole thing about uh, how I was gonna do this that and the other making video is gonna do this then do that moving forward bringing you along with me and um, I'm really really trying to keep true to that um, so that's why I'm uh, I'm desperate to keep this space clear so then if ever I do anything, like any breeding, I, can, I might be able to capture. Uh, there's more chance of me capturing stuff that's going on um, if I have my setup in here. So without further ado, let's just crack on with this video. So this one is just a quick rehousing. Um, so if you watched the previous video, you'll know that I'm involved with Bugfest and that involves me um, doing events like festivals or going into schools, educational talks in colleges, etc. Talking about the bugs and doing some handling um, and, and interacting with the kids and things like that. And um, so basically, even though I've got quite a lot of bugs that I take along, I did have a few gaps that I wanted to fill. Um, and, and basically those gaps were the herbivores, <laughs> so stick insects, uh, leaf insects, um, grasshoppers, um, etc, etc, things like that. And um, because um, usually if I have any projects involving herbivores, I just palm them off over to Gav, over at Impossible Inverse, my right hand man. He takes over usually the, uh, the, the leaf munching uh, machines. <laughs> and, um, because you know, I, to be honest, I, I gave I gave up. I couldn't be asked with uh, foraging for bramble and privet and things like that years and years and years ago. But um, but there was a, there was glaring gaps in my uh, in my bug fest repertoire where I needed to just fill with a few amazing um, herbivore bugs. And one of which is um, is the leaf insects. So um, I was thinking, I really really need to get hold of some leaf insects because I'm all about the mimicry and the uh, camouflage and how animals have evolved to uh, blend in with their environments etc um, which I'm not going to get into now obviously I'm going to I'm saving that for, for for future videos which I'll talk more in depth about the different animals that I've got and that I take to Bugfest and and what I talk about in terms of their evolution and how they've evolved and adapted to their environments etc and things like that um, and one of the things I really, really wanted was the leaf insects because they are absolutely amazing. They are right at the very top when it comes to mimicry and the way that they've evolved to um, basically camouflage and look like leaves um, and various other um, um, foliage. So, um, so I decided I really, really wanted some of those. So my first port of call was our Claire. Claire over at Aruna Exotics and Aruna Emporium. Links are in the description and um, Claire's absolutely amazing. She's a great friend and um, she does all kinds of stuff. So uh, on the Aruna 
Um, Aruna Exotics website, she sells all the jumping spiders, leaf insects and various other projects that she's got going on with inverts um, and things. So um, honestly, if you're interested in getting any jumping spiders, leaf insects, um, then please, please go visit Claire over at Aruna Exotics. But not only that, Claire does, um, she has also has a website called Aruna Emporium. Um, so, and she does all kinds of things like candles. You can see the uh, Aruna Exotics Jumping Spider logo right there. She also does stickers. Check these out, guys. Holographic sticker, sticker packs. Got loads of different sticker packs. Crayons, colouring, colouring um, books and packs with crayons and things like that. Christmas cards, birthday cards, all the good stuff. Tote bags, check it out. Can you see that? Well, you can see that in there. Tote bags, there you go. So she does all kinds of these sorts of things. She designs them herself. She prints them off herself. She just she does all that good stuff. So Claire, super, super talented, absolutely amazing person. So please get over to Aruna Exotics and Aruna Emporium if, you, if that's something that you're interested in. So I got on the blower to Claire. I said, oi, Claire, have you got any leaf insects? She said, yeah, of course I have. Anything for you, my friend. <laughs> and, um, and she hit me up with some leaf insects. So there you go. Philium, Philippinicum, leaf insect right there, guys. See, I'm putting that over there. Let me put my little light on. There we go. So there we go. Right there. That's what she sent me. Now I asked her, I think I only asked her for about six, but um, I think I can definitely see at least eight in there. Unfortunately, Claire, one has mismolted, and that, that's obviously that's nobody's fault. It's just one of these things that happens. Um, so I think there's at least eight. I think there might even be more, so I, I don't know yet. Um, anyway, I'm going to rehouse those into this. It's going to be a quick rehousing, guys. This is one of the Unseen Universe double door acrylic enclosures, and uh, um, basically, it's a really, really slick, nice, lovely looking thing. It's got a, um, it's, it's got ventilations on all sides and on the top lid. There's no mesh, so it do, will retain the humidity really, really well. Um, uh, and I think this is just the right size for the size of uh, nymphs that Claire sent me. Um, so basically, um, setup's pretty simple. It's just your standard substrate, topsoil, um, cocoa fibre, vermiculite, um, and then that's just kept nice and moist. Don't let that dry out. On the top, I've got some sphagnum moss. That's just to lock in the humidity, so you just keep that nice and moist at all times. And then inside it's just bramble, just a couple of sticks of bramble with the leaves, obviously. And um, and yeah, and that is pretty much it. The leaf insects can climb the acrylic on the sides if they wish, but there's also plenty of branches uh, and little offshoots on the bramble itself. Now, um, in order to keep your bramble as fresh as possible for as long as possible you want to keep it hydrated and the best way to do this is to get yourself a little pot um, or dish um, that's like an inch or two deep and you can use that as long as it can retain the water and there's no leaks or anything it does just not porous if it's just it needs to be able to hold the water um, make a little hole in your substrate put the pot down into the hole in the substrate just pack pack the substrate around the pot just to hold it in place and then put your put the stems of the um, of the bramble into the pot make sure it's filled up with water and keep it nice and full and that will basically keep your uh, bramble hydrated for well over a week if you don't do that if all you do is just put your bramble in there it'll just dry out within a day or two um, and then it'll just be no good whatsoever um, you can give it a spray every day or whatever if you, to try and like make it last a little bit longer but the best way to do it is to do what I've just said get a little pot of water put your bramble inside it and then it'll just absorb all that water and it'll keep it'll keep it hydrated for well over a week you can keep spraying it every day as well because the leaf insects do like that humidity and also they can drink a little drink off the top now just to just to mention that you just one or two things you need to be aware of um, like I said give your give the leaves a spray 
um, just be aware that because your leaf insects are really really flat um, and really thin um, if you spray them directly or you overspray they can just stick to the leaves and then they might not be able to peel themselves off and they will drown um, so that's one thing to think about the other thing to think about is in your pot you might be concerned that you um, your nymphs might be just a little bit too small and they there might be a chance that if they fall into the, the water um, in the pot they won't be able to get back out and they'll drown and die so in order to avoid that all you need to do is just get something so a non-toxic substance like some cotton wool um, or something else like a sponge or something clean make sure it's clean obviously and just plug um, all the area around where the where where the uh, where it's open just plug that um, so that the water um, isn't exposed so that your leaf insects can't fall into that that's all you need to think about and then after that everything's good so so without further ado let's just crack on shall we and um, let's get the leaf insects into here awesome
So there we go guys, they're all in there now, all nice and happy in their new home and um, yeah, so there was 10, unfortunately one mismalted on the way, um, but um, these things happen guys, you know, these things happen, uh, but um, but I did only ask for about 6, Claire obviously sent me 10, I've got 9 here, they are a mixed variety of sizes, which is absolutely fantastic. And um, I'm going to have a lot of fun watching these because these guys are a heck of a lot of fun to keep, honestly. So, uh, so as the name suggests, uh, Philium Philippinicum, they are from the Philippines. They are herbivorous. Uh, they eat bramble, oak, rose, and blackberries. Um, and um, and yeah, they're obviously amazing leaf mimics. They love to hang out on the leaves um, and obviously um, eat, basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're more active in the evenings um, and uh, because obviously during the day there's a lot more predators around um, so and um, obviously their main camouflage is to sit still and look like a leaf <laughs> so as soon as they start moving around then obviously they're giving the game away so they tend to just like move around and be a lot more active during the evenings where obviously there's fewer predators that can spot them moving around during the, during the evenings uh, so yeah, there you go. Uh, I think there's not really not much else to say uh, other than um, I think they live for between 10 to 18 months. Females obviously live longer than males. So females grow to be about 7 to 8 centimetres. Uh, males a little bit shorter, but the main size difference is in their, um, their, their general bulk, their width and their overall size. Females are just a lot broader, a lot bigger. Um, whereas males are a lot more, a lot slimmer, um, so uh, that's the main difference, really. Um, yeah, so uh, these should remain like a, more of a green sort of colour. They can vary a little bit with the hints of yellow and maybe beige or brown, but generally they're quite green. Um, and um, I can't wait to see these grow up. They're absolutely beautiful. So thank you so much to Claire for sending me these. Ah, oh, Claire. Over, don't forget to go check out Claire over at Aruna Exotics and Aruna Emporium. Links are in the description, as I mentioned before. So, uh, so thank you so much. And um, yeah, like I say, just um, temperature-wise, just just you know nothing special. Just as long as they don't get cold. So anywhere between 23 and 26, you know, that's just a nice a nice regular temperature for, for so many species um, and um, they'll be they'll be more than happy with that give them a spray um, just make sure they don't the, the, the substrate doesn't dry out like I say keep that water dish topped up so that the um, so that the bramble you can get as much life out of your brambles because they're not going to eat all this within seven to ten days so you may as well try and maintain that bramble as long as possible so you're not just changing it every two or three days um, because this what I've got in here they basically even though there's nine of them in there they're still quite small and that'll that'll they'll live off that they could live off that for weeks if I could keep the bramble alive and and, and healthy and hydrated for that long so um, so you need to just try and it's just about um, basically saving yourself any work <laughs> Save yourself as much work as possible, really, by just trying to maintain the ramble for as long as possible. So, uh, so yeah. So there you go. Keep that topped up water. Give it a spray every couple of days. Keep the humidity up. And, um, and yeah. I mean, I might spray this every day just because um, it gets quite warm in here, especially now um, that spring, spring and summer's come in, apparently. <laughs> so it is warming up a little bit now. So, uh, so just keep be aware of, uh, depending on how what the ambient temperature is, like the room you're keeping it in, like if it gets quite dry and warm throughout the day, you might want to think about just um, just giving these guys a spray every day just to uh, just to keep that humidity up, but also so they can have a drink. Um, because they do come, come from quite humid areas in the Philippines, in the rainforests and the jungles. So um, that humidity is quite important to them. So just something to think about there. Um, so other than that, um, that's it really. There's nothing really much else to say. I, uh, I'm really, really excited to see these grow up a little bit. And then once they get a little bit bigger, once they've molted two or three, a couple more times, I will start then taking them out and about with me um, to the schools. I mean, I'll probably take them with me anyway, just because, just so the kids can look at them. But at the moment, they're just a little bit too small to start getting out, I think. 
but um, although there is one there is one in there I spotted that was of a, a, a pretty decent size already so um, so yeah so thank you so much to Claire and thank you to each and every one of you for tuning in watching another video and like I say this is now the beginning hopefully this is the beginning of uh, the start of a journey that um, I'm going to be bringing to you more videos like this just short and sweet little care videos rehousing videos and breeding videos etc and um, and yeah so uh, we'll see how it goes shall we so thank you so much to everybody and uh, i'll see you in the next video so take care thank you and goodbye right now that's all out of the way sanderson i want to see you after class right sanderson what the heck do you think you're playing at all i got in my bloody box was this what's that I've got a million of these. What do I need this for? Invert Show's 2023 show calendar. Oh, what's that? Where's all my stickers? Where's all my stickers and my goodies and all my other bits and pieces? Come on. I got nothing. I got that. <laughs> I want some stickers, man. Look, see this down here? I've decided because this is my new area. I want lots and lots of stickers, so call it. I've got loads of stickers already that I've been saving over the years that I've never stuck anywhere. They're all just in drawers, randomly placed. Um, I'm going to decide that I'm going to start show and tell all my stickers and stuff here. So all my good buddies, all my YouTube friends, all my buddies in the exotic world, breeders, sellers, just keepers, anybody who has stickers, whatever. I want them, send them to me. I'm going to stick them all on here. This is going to be my new sticker board. So, except for Claire. Claire, I don't, I'm not bothered. Keep them. Keep them. Keep them for yourself. That's what, and all your other friends. I'm sure they got them. I didn't get any. All I got with that. None. Not a single sticker. Not one. Fine. Great. Right, well, you know what? Stick it. Stick your stickers, Sanderson. Sticky Sanderson can stick his stickers up a sticky arse. <laughs> I don't care. Don't care at all, honest. Look, I'm not bothered at all. I don't give two hoots. Okay, right. So, so that's it. We're done. We are done. And as punishment, I want, I want you to write out one hundred times. I'm sorry, Mitch. You're the best. You're King Dingling. You are the most amazing person I know. I'm such a rubbish, useless person. I should be. Kept in a small room, dark, cold, no heating, no lighting, no electricity. Kept in a dark room until I learned my lessons. I want you to write all that out 100 times and on it on my desk by Monday morning. So thank you so much and good night.